Greetings, I'm Captain Rachel. Welcome back to the Sunday Sampler. This week we're going to be taking a quick look at Everspace. This is a roguelite uh, action space combat game. Self-published by Rockfish Games. And as per usual, this is a review copy. Oh, this is going to be an interesting one and a very long-winded one. And I've recorded this before, but I had a recording error, which meant that I get to record this again and uh, uh, hopefully kind of organize my thoughts a little bit more. This is a game of really a bit of contradiction. It's not a bad game, but it's not a great game either. And we'll, uh, I'll get into that in well, and, uh, as we go through this, let's just go ahead and jump in into a new play file. And first thing is off is, well, since this is a roguelite, this means that it does have permadeath and it has a persistent progression system. Think of this as basically the space combat of Freelancer, the map system, and kind of the rush mechanic of Faster Than Light, FTL or FTL Fast and Light, if you want the proper title, and the upgrade system of Rogue Legacy, or at least Rogue Legacy is the one that's kind of popularized the idea. Let's just dive into that last bit first with the upgrade system, because in between runs, or I should say at the start of a run, that's really the only time that you really get to look at this. So the perk screen, which is your upgrade screen, is kind of a daunting to look at at first, but it's really not that big a deal. A lot of this is incremental stuff, percentage-based upgrades, or I should say flat number upgrades, but you know, it's a percentage of the base stat. But then there's also uh, other things like, for example, primary weapon slot. In order to unlock this, I had to get a device slot. And there's a lot of this sort of thing where you have to unlock one thing in order to get something else uh, just because they said so for example boost speed i have to increase my max speed first hit point uh, repair rate i have to get nanobot efficiency first some of it makes sense some of it doesn't yeah like the secondary weapons i have to get a primary weapon first but there's only one uh, primary weapon slot well yeah you know, there's well, I should say one upgrade slot, which gives this particular ship three uh, weapon slots uh, or primary weapon slots altogether. And also the thing is that the bottom half of this is for this particular ship, in this case, the Colonial Interceptor. There's three ships, the Interceptor, the Scout, which you, you well, it, it's kind of obvious what these do. The Interceptor, which a little bit of a fly around of the ship. It's sort of your jack of all trades, you know, not particularly strong in anything, but not particularly weak. Your scout is your very fast, agile, uh, but fragile <laughs> uh, ship. And then you have the gunship, which ironically enough doesn't have shields. It require it uh, focuses on. As a matter of fact, I can't even show you the setup since I don't have it. And both these are unlocked with credits, which. The credits do not hold over in between runs. You have to get a fairly decent run, but it's not that difficult to get uh, to get one of these ships. And then, you know, you have them. But uh, supposedly the tanky class, the uh, gunship, it doesn't have a proper shield on it. It has a forward facing shield, which is strange just because of how the combat works in this game, which we'll get into combat. Well, when we get into combat. And because half the park screen is you know, dedicated per ship, it really makes it so that you want to stick with one ship. At least it seems that way in my just first impressions of the game. And also, it, yeah, trying to decide what to get first. I mean, credit boosts are definitely very useful, as well as rare loot chance. So let's just go ahead and dive in. And there's other things like it does have the FTL system of the map where it, you are in individual like little mini sections of the map. And then you have to jump in between them using fuel. And that's what lucky jump chance is. So let's just go ahead and dive in to grab some more uh, credit boosts. 
fuel capacity is probably not a terrible idea. I want to get that uh, primary weapon slot. That will take up uh, most of my uh, remaining money. And this is something that is kind of an improvement over what Rogue Legacy does. Is that some of the very big investments, like the weapon slots, uh, some of the uh, boosts, also like the revival, which allows you to essentially loot your own body. I won't go in too much in the story, which I'll get into, well, at least a little bit of the story after this. Is that uh, Rogue Legacy had a problem for me where you kind of get a, pla a power plateau where. You hit a certain point where you're not able to get any more upgrades until you have a certain amount of a success f with a run. But because they have some of these upgrades where, you know, it's you buy in with 200 and you're uh, going towards a maximum of 2000 for that particular upgrade, it does make it so that you're not as likely to plateau where you know you're just gonna have wasted runs and after you start a run whatever money is left is gone there's no saving money so if i wanted to save up for a new ship i have to get all 10,000 credits in a single run and that's something that i absolutely despise in these upgrade systems but uh what, what do you do oh and also these ships do have alternate loadouts which uh i'm not sure if it unlocks another loadout I'm just going to run the B load out because it's a flat out better. Which, you know, that, that, that's something that they, this is going to be a, something that I talk about a lot in this video is that it feels like they took ideas or took inspiration. I don't want to say rip off because, you know, that's, you know, if there was no taking inspiration from other games, yeah, you know, we wouldn't have the first person shooter genre at all, but that's beside the point. But it feels like they took inspiration from some games and not realize what made that game good. For example, the loadout system. The B loadout is just flat out better. This beam we weapon, 80 uh, shield and uh, uh, hull damage. I mean, it is just flat out better than anything except the Gatling gun. And the Gatling gun only is against hull damage. And you have to lead the shot a lot more. Granted, the beam uh, laser has a very short range, but we'll get into you know, why that doesn't matter when we get into the combat section of things. But the, in FTL, the different loadouts favor different play styles. In this, there's just one that's flat out better. I'm not sure if the other ships are like this or if there's more loadouts that uh, offer even more power or if there's alternate play styles, but as it is right here yeah there's yeah, it's it, this is kind of indicative of what i was talking about is that they saw the idea of ftl and some of the ideas from it and just yeah missed the point of it so let's just go ahead and well let's get another primary weapon just why not and that leaves me 700 left well get uh i'm just looking at these trying to decide everything looks so um actually a little bit pointless because a lot of this is really just incremental you know little percentage points like now i can work on getting two more secondary slots you know let's just get some more speed Includes visual upgrade. I'm not sure what that does. I guess we'll find out. And we can't do anything here. And uh, before we really get going, I do want to bring up the codex. Because this is well more story heavy than most roguelite or rogue-like, depending on you know your terminology, uh, games. But if you're coming back to this or you're having a point where you're kind of just plateauing or you just get unlucky with a lot of runs and just, you know, put down the game for a while you're going to hit a point where you come back and you have no idea what's going on and they do have a fairly decent sized uh, uh, hopefully you know, not give any major spoilers a, a fairly decent sized uh, codex here to allow you to kind of catch up on the gist of the story that's that said 
you know, it, there, there's a reason why roguelike games don't have a lot of story, and that's just because you either have it where you go through long stretches where you don't have any story because you're kind of just plateauing or you're not progressing far enough, I guess I should say. Or on the flip side of things, you have the Sunless Sea problem where you die, you go back through, and you're playing through the same major events over and over again. You know, th th that one's really figured out a good solution either way. So there's a reason why a lot of games don't have a lot of story in these uh, in this genre. And it feels like they're kind of, once again, kind of missing the point. <laughs> we'll just take the Interceptor out, mostly because I don't have a choice with the B loadout. Uh, there, oh, it says right there. Uh, it's two or three. So there's a third loadout if I reach Sector 7 and I've reached Sector 6. So there you go. I completely missed that there. And there you go. And you can change the colors of things as well. You make the ship look ungodly. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, pur oh, purplish pink. That, that's terrible. That, that's absolutely terrible. Let's just go back to that. Maybe with a nice orange highlight. There we go. And you do eventually find more decals and more colors, but this is purely cosmetic. Ironically enough, I found cos a lot more cosmetics than I have crafting stuff, which we'll get into crafting in a little bit. Let's just launch and get on our merry way. Oh, and this is something that pops up uh, due to my loadout or my upgrades, I should say, is I get bonus loot or to start off with. You can get a damage limiter on some nanobots, which is healing. We'll take the nanobots. And your three difficulty choices. You have easy, which gives you less credits, but honestly, it get, allows you to get much further in the game, at least at my stage. And as you progress in the uh, in the roguelite grind, or run the roguelite treadmill, you will be able to get just as far in normal and hard mode, but I'll uh, it does tell you what uh, happens. Granted, some of that is minor spoilers, but yeah, we'll just deal with it and launch. And welcome to Everspace. And, uh, the, you do get some challenges, like, let's see, destroy 50 fuel tanks in a single run, destroy it. Dream about ramming it and shoot down the 50 floodlights. Those are off uh, various spaceships and or uh, various uh, space stations. Now, I do apologize for any minor uh, uh, frame rate drops. This game runs absolutely beautifully uh, when I'm not recording, but um, it, I have had a few frame drops while I'm recording. Uh, there's something going on. Let's just go ahead and talk about combat. Uh, it does have a little bit of auto aim with, uh, especially the beam weapons, which you kind of need to be perfectly honest. There's a instance of the frame dropping there for a moment. I'm not sure how bad that's going to be on recording. Uh, come on, there we go. Credits. Nice and simple. Uh, but uh, you may have noticed, you know, my big beef with combat already is that everything really likes to crowd you. Uh, the thing with, uh, well, Freelancer is the obvious thing to uh, compare this to just because it recommends mouse and keyboard flight. It, it has absolutely no support for flight sticks whatsoever, at least at this point. And it does have rudimentary, uh, gamepad controls, but I'll be perfectly honest, I haven't really tried them because because they're aping a freelancer, I just went with uh, what they suggested. Oh, there's some plasma over there. I'll go ahead and fly over to get that. But, and, and because of the aim assist, especially with some of the fast moving ships, you know, it's kind of needed anyway. But, the reason why my, my problem with where everything gets up on you is that it makes you know any long range weapons you know kind of pointless to be perfectly honest at least as far as I could tell oh we've got some more inbounds 
Like right there, they they both spawned within a kilometer of me. I mean, there's. I mean, right now I don't have anything that's longer range, but that's beside the point. Oh, a damage elementer uh, mark two over there. I'll take that. Yeah, you know, uh, if I had longer range weapons that did, yeah, you know, more damage to a certain type of shield or a hull. You know, it makes absolutely no difference right now because they are all literally coming right at me. And it just is... A, it feels like they're missing the point, really. <laughs> because a lot of Freelancer was dogfighting. At least, well, I should say the combat. I should, because the trading and the uh, exploration will get into that in just a little bit. Oh, some mining. It just feels like they, well, like I said, they missed the point. Oh, everything gets right on top of you and uh, just kind of buzzes you for, you know, uh, until either you uh, kill it or it kills you. And it becomes more of who can aim better instead of who could outfly and who could out dodge, at least so far in the game. Granted, as the levels progress, you know, it becomes more and more apparent that you have to uh, well, learn to dodge and yeah, have to get better weapons. And I'm flying over to the space station to see if there's more loot. It, which, it's just disappointing that, you know, there's... It, it becomes a, uh, a punching match instead of dogfighting. We got a beam laser. And, oh. So, I got a new weapon. A beam laser. You can see it kind of changing my looks there as I uh, switch to it, which is a little strange that it does that. I didn't notice that before. But overall, well, I guess I should, uh, I did really mention the graphics, is that this game is absolutely gorgeous for the most part. I mean, granted, some of the, like right there was a little bit of, you can see a level of detail uh, change right there. As I yeah move back and forth, does that especially uh, along this? See if that yeah you see that uh, just ever so slightly change, and that's one of those uh, little things that kind of uh, keeps it from being at, well no game is perfect but yeah it's one of those glaring flaws. So let's just, uh, since we've been collecting stuff, let's talk about crafting real quick. Let's see if I have anything uh, enough to craft. Uh, no, I don't, but, uh, well, you can see the crafting screen here is that it's broken up into a lot of different resources. And obviously you need different resources to craft different things. As a matter of fact, hang on, I may be able to, yeah, like right now I have enough to build two missiles. Uh, to light missiles. I don't have enough for the corrosion missiles yet because they require something else, which... Well, that is one odd thing, is that if I'm in the middle of crafting, I can't mouse over to see, okay, I'm missing whatever I have here. Oh, it's ore. Or if I'm wanting to build... Yeah, uh, corrosion missiles... I have to click off of this to see, okay, well, I need gas. I mean, created eventually you learn these icons and it's not that big a deal, but it's just an oddity. Maybe it's just the fact that they built this game for VR, and I'll just go ahead and warp out to the next sector. And this does have VR support, and supposedly fairly decent VR support. Yeah, I'll pop to, well, you know, first of all, we have the map screen, which this one's you know, kind of just a very... And this is actually the most boring map I've encountered. You know, it's literally one or two rounds. The easy way or the hard way. Let's take the easy way just so I could chatter away. I will pop into the cockpit. And, you know, it's a... Kind of a boring cockpit, actually. And, honestly, it... Uh, is a... A little... Well... Well, one thing that they do, I, I should probably mention this along with the crafting, is that your crafting resources also are used in, matter of fact, 
I didn't even realize I picked up two beam lasers. Uh, uh, yeah, that's completely pointless. Uh, uh, your crafting uh, resources are also used in repair. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and head over to the repair screen. You have the uh, hull, which is you know, your base HP. You know, this gets to zero, you die. And this is my seventh time. But you also have subsystems, and some of these require various resources. And as you take damage, you have a chance to have these uh, subsystems uh, get damaged. And some of them are more important than others, like, uh, let's pick one almost at random, life support. You lose life support, you have three minutes, before, or, or about three minutes before you suffocate. And that's game over. And the thing is that these resources are random what you get. And there's no way to say, okay, well, I've gotten, a, you know, I've taken some life support damage. My life support's offline. Oh, crap, there's no gas around. Well, that's game over. Even though, you know, my health isn't uh, uh, down. Well, it becomes a point of, okay, do I want to... Oh, it looks like we have a little bit of combat incoming. Uh, do I want to upgrade or do I want to uh, you know, hold off in case I get damaged? Because, well, it, there's just so many different resources to try to... Uh, to take care of which you know it is a a, a, a lot of roguelite is about your resource management but at the same time it feels like there's too much to deal with having to deal with both we'll go over to the shipwreck in just a moment now since I'm close to this I'll grab this first uh, having to deal with all the resources to uh, both repair and and craft, and the fact that at least one of these is a, a, just a death sentence if it gets damaged, is it's just that's like you know kind of bullshit to be perfectly frank. Oh, okay. So let's head over to the shipwreck and see what's over there. There's some GMB uh, freighters as well, and some mountable ore. And all sorts of goodies. But yeah, it's just, yeah, the crafting and the repair feels, uh, like I said, it feels like uh, they kind of missed the mark. They've locked onto you. Whoa. Okay, that was showing shipwreck. Okay, that was bad. Let's get out of here. He who fights and runs away, right? Or loots and runs away, I guess. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so... They're going to be hostile for me to uh, this... Uh, area, but I can just escape if need be. We'll at least uh, fight a couple more guys. Because the thing is that it becomes very much a well, a ten uh, a light missiles. We'll just salvage that to get the crafting materials. It becomes, you know, risk management, which is not a terrible thing, but at the same time, it's, yeah, it just feels like they've missed the mark. It's not a terrible game, but it's not a great game. And let's just go ahead and mention the exploration aspects of this as well, because that's something else that feels a little bit off. Now, I've uh, because I'm playing on easy, it's not as big a deal, but it can happen if I'm spending a lot of time uh, res uh, looking for resources. And this is why another one of those instances of the game feels like it's contradicting itself. Yeah, I'm just kind of leaving to get rid of the hostility, because if I don't attack them, I should uh, drop hostility to them. Yeah, see there. 
no longer hostile. Um, is, well, the exploration aspect where, okay, I could only find things that are in a certain range of myself. So, I'm having to hunt resources a fair amount. You die. But because oh, it's not compatible with my ship, so that means it's just literally salvage. Which I could hold. Wish I could hold on to that to sell, but eh. But I'm having to uh, go around and uh, actually fly into some some really tight spots. Like this is a good example of that. Where, you know, having to mess around with this giant asteroid and possibly get into all sorts of scrapes. And who knows, you know, what this asteroid has entailed. As a matter of fact, I've had some asteroids have uh, missile turrets on them and, you know, not know it until, you know, they start attacking me, which is lovely. But because of how the uh, exploration system works, is that you know, you're spending so much time, you have to uh, spend time to hunt resources. You have to then watch out for the uh, omniscient fleet that is literally unkillable to just try to, you know, you know, con you're constantly on the clock. But at the same time, it makes it feel like, okay, if you're not searching the entire map, you know, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage because you are going to be at a huge disadvantage because you need all these resources to be able to repair your ship you to be able to craft uh, stuff to get your upgrades it, it just feels like once again they missed the mark they missed the point as we get some more crafting stuff there some more crystals and uh, the thing is also you have to spend this time because you know, as you go through the game Things like crystals become more and more rare as it, they become replaced with more, uh, well, at this point, rare, but you know, more high end crafting materials. So you could also, you know, kind of screw yourself if crystals, you know, you didn't get enough crystals early in the game, but you need them later on. Well, you have to either trade for them or, you know, maybe get a more rare uh, deposit later and not uh, well let's go ahead and look at the trader while we're here and honestly i don't use the traders all that much because they usually work off the credit system which is also your uh, persistent upgrade system but we'll see what he has anyway you know like here two damage limiters for six compound that's actually not terrible I don't think. well I have that's most of my compound but it's also you know I can't sell it's always you know trading off you know I get 19 crystals for non compound well it's just you know it's just one of those odd things that I just can't outright sell for credits I feel like I'm racking on this game a lot, uh, and that's the thing is that I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it's yeah you know, as great as it could have been. And the thing is that this spent a long time, I think, in early access. I know it felt it spent at least a fair amount of time, and it feels like they kind of focused on the wrong sort of things. To have come so far is an achievement. Okay, so GMB fighters. A credit transport, so I could just rob that if need be. Some mineable uh, fuel, which I need fuel. A matter of fact, mineable fuel is kind of a rarity. Usually, you have to get this from uh, just killing ships, which. There we go. Hmm. Uh, 
And I'm just looking around, and this looks like a very, very bad sector, to be honest, because there's not a lot here. Well, a lot here that I could uh, take advantage of. And, yeah, that's the nature of the roguelite, yeah. Risk management and... Oh, we got uh, hostiles. Once again, they drop in literally under a kilometer. And this just doesn't feel like what they were trying to do with the combat. Come back here, you. There we go. And also, at times it's very easy to lose track of stuff. Like... Uh, especially stuff off in the distance. It just feels like all the arrows need to be you know, like twice their size. Or maybe I'm just getting old, I don't know. Yeah, well, let's head to the next sector because we've... And of course there's an object blocking my way. Uh, a wreck from where I purposely ended my last run uh, to be able to record this because I had a recording error. Yeah, Windows 10 will fuck you over. Okay, so this is also a little perk. Uh, and I, you know, I think we're actually about done with the, you know, our with what we need to do because you know, there's not a hell of a lot to talk about here. Uh, there's a a derelict uh, ship as well. But yeah, it just it, it feels like they missed the mark on the combat. That's and that's really disappointing to me because this could feel so much better. And also the fact that probably something else that really uh, that I just didn't notice until just a little bit ago was the fact that there's no damage direction indicator it's always you know just you're getting uh, it tells you that you're getting damaged it just to tell you from what direction and that's something that freelancer did really well was it it didn't make you guess where damage was incoming from And maybe that's to its, uh, you know, to this game's detriment is that it, it, it just makes it so that it's, you know, a punching match. It's, you know, just a brawl. As we see shield generator. I want to see how I can get into here. Or hopefully not spend too much time on this. There's little, like, almost puzzle sections We've where. We've got company. Oh boy. Yeah. I wish the. That's something else is that the game loves to lock onto the wrong thing. Alright, let's see. Shield generator, sh uh, special tech container. Just uh, kind of looking around and really just killing some time because I think we're pretty much done here. It's if you have an itch for freelancer like combat, this will scratch it for the most part. But I think you'll be sorely disappointed if you want anything a lot like freelancer because yeah, you know, it's definitely lacking. Like right there, it was, yeah. I, 
it wasn't showing me exactly where that damage was coming from. Hey, they actually give me a blueprint. The blueprints are just so damn rare. That That's actually how you learn your uh, craftable stuff, is that you have to get blueprints as random drops, which can be quite irritating. Okay, then. Okay, that opened up that. There's a lot of very tight uh, precision flying in this. Pretty much more than Freelancer ever had. Uh, that I could remember, at least, and I played it yeah, somewhat recently as well. I don't think I have the yeah access key did not needed. Uh, that's something that annoys me is that the access key system. Uh, essentially, the access key is that uh, elites. Yeah, uh, we haven't even seen an elite in this run yet. Uh, essentially, high level uh, or, or stronger enemies have a chance to drop an access key, which is needed to unlock certain things, which is just frustrating as hell. Shooting a missile. And kill you. Come on. You die. And killed you. But just look at my notes, see if there's anything else that uh, really uh, need to talk about, and I'm not seeing it. It is, uh, well, let's just go down the notes. Uh, it, uh, absolutely stunning graphics. There may have been some frame rate issues in the video, and that's just purely my recording software being stupid in the latest Windows update, and I'm needing to try to figure out what's going on with that, and I do apologize for that. There is no flight stick support yet for the game. And it strongly suggests uh, mouse and keyboard, uh, which I don't have a particular tr a problem with. Adaptive armor. Fine. I, I don't like the energized boost, so we could do it with that. And just salvage that. And that's on the other side of the wall. It's on the outside, I think. Yeah, it is. Mmm, nanobots. But let's see, uh, no flight stick support, and supposedly the gamepad controls are very rudimentary. Even the Steam, uh, pad support or is very limited. We'll just kind of just hover here for a bit. Rogue, uh, this is basically the uh, yeah, a Frankenstein game. You know, uh, ideas from Rogue Legacy, FTL, and uh, Freelancer. Not really doing a lot with any of them, which is disappointing. Uh, the exploration is not terrible, but at the same time, that because it's constantly rushing you, uh, matter of fact, we'll just kind of sit here until we hit the thing, and then we could just jump. Uh, because it's, uh, you know, there's always the threat of that fleet coming in to uh, run you off. You're always rushing, and, uh, yep, yeah, because you also need to keep your fuel up. And that requires you to kill ships. Usually, I mean, grand. I mean, I've been killing pretty much everything I've encountered, and well, and some things that I shouldn't have. And uh, yeah, my fuel is. I have enough for two jumps. Created, yeah, you know, that goes. That's not as big a deal. Oh, I hear a tone. 
or so, it sounds like almost a metrodome or something. Maybe that's just warning me that, you know, time's running out. Maybe. But, uh, you know, that maybe is just something that, you know, I'm not, I haven't ran on the roguelite treadmill enough yet, which is very possible. Requires a lot of precision fly, uh, flying, but dogfights turn into punching matches, which you've seen, you know, everything's coming in at under a kilometer, which just, it feels like everything's at a quarter to half the range of what Freelancer did uh, to make co it's space combat interesting. And because everything seems to have, you know, turrets except you, at least in this ship, you know, it just feels more like you're having to dodge instead of outfly something, which is just... Uh, oh, there's the Orcar uh, forces. So that gives you an idea of, you know, just how long you have until, you know, you're being forced out of a sector. VR support. Uh, it is easy to lose things in the HUD, uh, especially if they're far away. And I didn't get to find the wreck in that map, but, you know, we're, we're ending the video anyway, so it doesn't matter. And crafting blueprints are exceptionally rare. Oh, and also the story, you know, it, it's very basic, but if you are if you care at all about the story, you're going to have to go back and read the codex a few, uh, uh, several times. And as a matter of fact, the, you know, you're given a base overview of things, but you definitely want to go read the codex for a lot more in-depth info on what's going on. And I think that wraps us up as always. Oh, well, I should say that this is a $30 game, so well out of the impulse buy range. And I think that wraps us up as always. Constructive feedback is greatly appreciated, especially for the Sunday sampler because it helps me determine what I should be playing and what I shouldn't. And I, I do once again apologize for any FPS issues. I am going to try to do uh, some resampling on the areas that I was having FPS issues where you know, the tank frame rate just dropped for really no particular reason. Uh, but we'll see if that you know, fixes anything or if it just makes things worse. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, as I said, constructive feedback is greatly appreciated. And if you don't really have anything to say but want to let me know that if you enjoyed or hated this, hit the appropriate buttons down below and subscribe. If you wish to see this, more of the Sunday Sampler, my Let's Play content, or the podcast that I do with a friend. And that comes out on Fridays at noon with the uh, Let's Play content coming out um, most days of the week. Hopefully. I'm still trying to replace one uh, series, but that's beside the point. Anyway... That wraps us up for this week. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll be back with the Sunday Sampler, well, next Sunday. I'll see you then.